let's take a look at the Feature Writer Transformer. The Feature Writer is, well, kind of a big deal. Why? Because it allows you to write data anywhere in your transformation. This means that you can process data, write it out midway, then continue with the processing. The workspace is doing attribute validation, writing the invalid features to Excel with the feature writer, then continuing on and sending out an email with a link to the Excel file. Before the feature writer was around, we would have had to place an Excel writer and write some Python shutdown code to handle the emailing. Or we would have had to have used a workspace runner to call another workspace. So you see, the feature writer makes life much easier. Let's take a closer look at this transformer. Here is the previous workspace. We are reading in Parks data, performing some attribute validation, then doing some processing on the validation results. Let's inspect the data after the string searcher. These are the parks that failed validation. There is a new failed validation attribute that tells us the reason for the failure. Now comes the feature writer. Our goal is to write these features to an Excel spreadsheet, then continue on with the translation. Go ahead and place a feature writer on the canvas. Connect the matched port of the string searcher to the connect input port of the feature writer. Notice the name of the input port changes to matched. Open the properties of the feature writer. The top part of the dialog is similar to the add writer dialog. Choose an Excel writer and output location. Click on the parameters button and set the overwrite file parameter to yes. The middle part of the dialog is split into left and right parts. The left-hand side lists the feature types we have defined and lets us pick which one to deal with. Notice that the list is the same as the input ports we have on the transformer. In fact, you can add new feature types by simply making new connections to the transformer. Back into the Feature Writer parameters, you can decide which one to use for the output schema. Notice how the sheet name changes based on the feature type selected. The right-hand side is like the Feature Type Parameters dialog, and it has the same tabs. These should be identical to the proper Writer Feature Type dialogs, meaning you can set dynamic parameters and Feature Type fanouts. Let's set up a fanout. For Sheet Name, select the Failed Validation attribute. Now there will be a sheet created for every unique failed validation value. Let's clean up the user attributes and delete those that we don't need. The bottom part of the Feature Writer dialog deals with the output from the transformer by creating attributes summarizing the writing process. The attributes defined here contain the name of the dataset written, the feature types written, and the number of features written. Since we can do further transformation after the data is written, it makes sense that we will want to know this sort of information. Now that we have set up the feature writer, let's add an inspector to see the outputs and check that the Excel file gets written. If we look at the attributes, we see details about the written output. We have the data set, the sheet names, and the number of features written. In Windows Explorer, we can confirm that the Excel file was written and that we have a tab for each unique validation failure. After the feature writer, an attribute creator creates the body of an email text. Notice our summary attribute is in use here. An emailer has been set up to email the Excel file written by the feature writer. Here is the email that's sent when the workspace runs. You can see how useful this transformer can be. Who knows, with the feature writer in combination with the feature reader, 
you may find yourself with a readerless and writerless workspace in the near future.